Hello and welcome to Allegheny County Libraries. Let's get lit. Well, this is where we talk about exciting titles so you, our patrons, can know what to read next. We will be talking about hot new titles to the library and also still burning titles, which may be older but are ones we have loved. Let's Get Lit is available in video format on the ACLS YouTube as well as in podcast format on Apple, Google, and Spotify, so you can subscribe for updates when we release new episodes. Let's Get Lit will be bi-monthly and we would love your feedback as we do this. Contact information will be in the description as well as at the end of the episode. Any titles mentioned will have links to our catalog in the description as well. Now, let's get lit. I'm Allie. I'm Shane. I'm Liz. I'm Laura. And today's topic is going to be new and noteworthy. Since it was spooky season, I read Cemetery Boys. It is a YA book and it does take place mostly in a graveyard. But That's it, the name. Yes. It is about a trans boy whose family actually can send ghosts, like, basically on to their next life. Oh. And to prove himself, since his family does not quite believe in his identity, he decides he's going to take it upon himself to prove it. And in doing so, he ends up summoning a ghost that he has to stick around with so that they can solve why this ghost has died. It was, it was exciting. It's very relatable. The characters, I just wanted to, like, hug them close and tell them that everything was going to be okay. And I think those are the best kind of stories when you can really love a character that much. Magic Lessons by Alex Hoffman. Alice Hoffman and... It's the prequel to Practical Magic. So I not read Practical Magic, so I thought I'll read the prequel. It was really good. Very good. I, I'm looking forward to reading Practical Magic now. You'll like it. It's good. Um, my, I was on vacation last week, so I read several books, but my number one book that I read was called The Ancestor by Danielle Trusani, I believe is how you pronounce it. Do not research this. Do not go looking for things about it. Just get it and read it. Um, you think it's going to be a classical, like, gothic story, and it takes a hard left, and you're like, oh. And I'm not going to say anything other than that, except for that I was not expecting um, the last half of the book to be what it ended up being. And it was very, I, I like things that are different, not predictable. If you read as much as we do, you can t tend to figure out what's happening. And so when you get a book that, like, you know, throws you a curve, there. Um, so I recommend it. We, I believe right now we just have it in print format, um, but it's it's really good. I really, really enjoyed it. I mean, unpredictable. I just finished The Hollow Places. Mm -hmm. Talk about very weird. I never knew what to expect at any given time, but it definitely wasn't what it was. It is kind of a sci-fi type horror story, um, and this girl goes to work in her uncle's museum, which has all these just totally weird things that like do not even exist. Mm -hmm. um, but in the meantime, she ends up finding a portal to a whole other world in like a back room. I hate it when that happens. Yeah, but this room is very creepy. This other world is very creepy. And whenever she comes back, she realizes she may have brought some of it with her. Mm -hmm. And you just never know what to expect. And it was suspenseful at times, but it's very humorous as well. I was not expecting the humor. It was like, Plastic comedy with horror, with sci-fi, like it's just a weird mixture of things and somehow it just kind of works. That's good. Yeah. So I wanted to talk about um, a new item that was added to the graphic novel collection in print form. Um, it's also available on Hoopla. Um, it's called The New World, a story that's post-apocalyptic and for some reason I've been really gravitating towards psychedelic stuff lately and this really fits that bill. There are um, illustrations that make you think that, that you're well, actually transported to an, uh, another world. Um, this is the United States, uh, but it is completely unrecognizable in terms of its color scheme. It's about how the gig economy has transformed uh, the way we live and how after the government collapses and about how everything will be live streamed. Bonds can be formed even in those technologically forward uh, type situations. It is really heartwarming. Also a parent-child uh, story where you really see the gap in um, people who might have not grown up with the internet and people who were born with uh, so device in their be hands. This side of the couch yeah. <laughs> and that side of the couch. Yes. <laughs> we did not grow up with devices in our hands. No, but 
but also we just got a supersized version of Silver Surfer Black. Also has illustrations by Chad Moore. So I would highly recommend anyone who's interested in like Marvel Comics or psychedelic artwork to check out the Silver, Sur Silver Surfer Black Super Size and you really get to appreciate the artwork um, as opposed to reading it online. Do you know that one book that just wasn't called 2020? Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 really. <laughs> Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell is about Shakespeare's 11 year old son, Hamnet, and the years leading up to hit the production of Hamlet. This is a wonderful literary fiction. The words, the way she weaves the tale, I just couldn't get enough of it. Except for that Shakespeare isn't really Shakespeare, but that's a topic for another shot. <laughs> but it's the truth. <laughs> he, well, that wasn't Shakespeare. The book, I'm waiting for the book. I'm very excited about it, but that's it's not really Shakespeare. I also read The Deep on My Vacation by Amakatsu. Um, she also wrote The Hunger. Uh, she does historical fiction with a supernatural twist. The story evolves from perspectives of the different, like um, the deep was about the uh, Titanic disaster. And so actual people who were on the Titanic, she uses those characters and they um, unfold the story slowly. Uh, same thing with The Hunger, which is about the Donner Party. So they're both um, really well done. I really enjoyed both of them. If you like historical fiction, I, I would recommend those to pretty much anyone. Um, I guess I'll talk about a book that I read in the course of three days uh, oh, okay. past week. It's called This Isn't Happening. It's about the um, recording and the, I guess, historical significance of Radiohead's Kid A album, which is an album that came out right before the year 2000. Something that I really, really got into in high school and listening to it uh, several years later still really works for me. Um, the book doesn't do what I hate album books do sometimes is they focus on the meaning of the lyrics. They try to derive oh. meaning from the song titles. They try to derive meaning beyond what the song is giving you. The book really gets into how um, prescient the feeling of the album was rather than the lyrical content. And the feeling of the uh, album really speaks to the digitization of everyone's lives, like this interconnectedness that it's even more so now in the year 2020. But um, Stephen Hyden is a uh, rock critic who's worked for Wired.com and uh, Rolling Stone. It just came out. We have it in the Marina system. And like I said, I read it in a few nights. Can I say it um, Yeah. Must have been good. I mean, yeah. you read it that way. Oh, but Orphan Collector. Sorry. It must be and good because you're super psyched. <laughs> I, it is good. I mean, you're very psyched right now. I am. What's, what's the Orphan? It about? Yeah, what's it about? What's it about? It's about um, a young girl who sur survives the Spanish flu, how she found her brothers, and a nurse. Well, really, she's not a nurse. And you'll understand what she does. She is the orphan collector. She's going to leave us hanging. We don't know. This is a guilty pleasure, I guess. Uh, the Home Edit just came out with a new book, and that's an organization book. But I just, in times of stress, <laughs> I like to organize my whole house. So I liked looking through the very colorful pictures. They also have a series on Netflix that just came out. So um, if you're feeling stressed and you like to organize things. We have a lot of good stuff out right now. We have yeah. a lot of a good new stuff. We have a lot of stuff in the collection. So go onto the catalog and check I have it to, out. I have to Go for Plug it. another one. Okay, Liz, let's have it. Oh, what we're here for. Anxious People by Frederick Backman. Excellent. And the cast of characters are just, I laugh. I was listening to it when I was walking and just laughing out loud. Well, there you go. Yeah. We could use some humor. Exactly. Right now. I'd like to put in one more plug for a, uh, <laughs> not, there hasn't been a lot of new movies released this year, um, but we have one of the best in our library system. It's called Emma. It's the latest version of Emma. Um, and it is, you know, literary fiction. It stars Anya Taylor Joy, who you might know from The Witch horror movie from a few, few years back. Uh, if you like really gorgeous cinematography, whip smart dialogue, and relationships that are boiling under the surface, I would say uh, check out Emma. Who knows for getting whip smart into a sentence appropriate? You don't Thank hear you. that often. It's like Aaron Sorkin-esque dialogue. 
uh, in a period piece. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. Um, I guess just quickly talk about some books on my radar. Uh, Deadly Education. Yes. Which is a, a magical school where if you fail, you die. Um, that one's on my list. This time next year, which I do believe is more of like a rom-com type thing where two people that keep running into each other, but they kind of consider each other enemies because they were born on the same day. And one has had like a misfortunate life and the other one has had a very fortunate life and they kind of blame each other for it hmm. in some aspects. I, I love a good, love a good rom-com. Pretty Little Wife, which is about a woman who finds out that and there have been some girls disappearing, and her husband is a suspect for it, but he's also now missing. And she's very confused because she knows the last time she saw him, he was dead. And she's like, why is my husband not staying dead? Huh. So I thought that one sounded Ooh, that good. one sounds great. And then These Violent Delights, which is a Julie, uh, Romeo and Juliet retelling set in Shanghai. And it's based around, uh, like, some of the mobs and stuff there, which... Sounds pretty interesting to me. Once some Future Witches yeah. and Plain Bad Heroines. Also Unspeakable Things. We have all of them. They're on the list. Anything by Shelby Foot. <laughs> Does he have any new books out? <laughs> <laughs> He's been dead for a yeah. while. Do we need to have to talk with you about seeing dead people? Uh, we heard about the Shelby Foot guy. <laughs> all right. Any other new missionables? There's a, there is really good stuff out there. Yeah, that's a lot. Check out the new Murder Bot book by Martha Wells. They're very short, sci-fi, really humorous, um, self-aware AI books. Check them out. And if you have questions or want recommendations, Allie puts the contact information, contact us, and we'll be happy to give you more recommendations, as many as you'd like. Call our libraries. Yep. We have lists. We do. Oh, yes. Plenty of more recommendations. Yep. All right. I mean, we could talk about Chubby Foot some more, but I think we're probably... That is it for our... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Um, that is it for our new titles. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us, and we will see you in the next one. Bye! Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining us for Let's Get Lit. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes. If you have any questions, suggestions, or want recommendations, please contact us either in the comments section by giving us a call or by emailing us at letsgetlit at allegheny county library dot info.